This has never happened before, and it's about to trigger a feedback loop. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today as a report released today by the government shows something that has never happened before. And policymakers have been warning that if this is left uncontained, it could lead to an economic feedback loop. Let's head over to the Wall Street Journal where we start the story where U.S. job openings quits remain elevated at the end of last year as private sector data for January showed early signs of a pullback in demand for workers. There were 10.8 million job openings on January 21st, according to analysis of postings by job site Indeed, a decrease of more than a million from its estimate at the end of December. The private sector figure reflects high demand for workers in a tight labor market where the number of jobs far exceeds the number of available workers. And not to be left out, the Labor Department on Tuesday separately released a December snapshot of hiring and departure trends that showed demand for workers and turnover remained historically high at the end of the year. And there were 10.9 million job openings in December, the department said up slightly from 10.8 million the prior month. And here you can see the job openings and labor turnover survey were not at all time highs, but we're really close to it. And this has got policymakers concerned, and you're about to see why. Let's keep going with a story where the number of times workers quit fell to 4.3 million in December from a record 4.5 million the prior month. Hiring also eased that month to 6.3 million, down by 330,000 from November. And here you can see the quits are rising too, and that tends to happen right before recession. But that's not the reason policymakers are concerned. Let's keep going because overall demand for workers is still quite strong, but some sectors might have just pulled back on their hiring plans because there's been a corresponding pullback in consumer demand for those services, Mr. Bunker said. He added that businesses offering in-person services were more affected by the Omicron variant. And we have seen companies lay off lately, not huge numbers, but there is something that doesn't make sense. And let's keep looking at the data because the White House warns the latest jobs data will be ugly due to Omicron. And Dee Plasky warned that COVID illnesses are counted as job losses. January jobs data were collected as U.S. Omicron cases soared. And Brian Deese, the director of President Joe Biden's National Economic Council, said the numbers could be confusing as COVID illnesses are recorded as job losses. Well, if that doesn't make much sense to you, hang tight, because it didn't to me either. We expect that this will have an impact on the numbers, Deese told MSNBC on Tuesday. We never put too much weight on any individual month, although they do tend to celebrate them when they're big. This will, per be, this will particularly be true this month because of the likely effect of the short-term absences from Omicron. And what we find out is if a worker was out and did not receive paid leave, they are counted as having lost their job. Nearly 9 million people missed work due to illnesses in January when the data was being collected. So we just want to kind of prepare, you know, people to understand how the data is taken. As a result, the month's job report may show job losses in part because workers were out sick from Omicron. Economists expect non-farm payrolls to rise 150,000 this due on Friday for January, the weakest reading since the end of 2020. The U.S. unemployment rate is seen remaining unchanged at 3.9%, according to forecasts compiled by Bloomberg. And of course, at 3.9%, that keeps the Fed absolutely in play. And if you're concerned about what the Fed tightening cycle could mean to your portfolio well you shouldn't be be sure to check out portfolio shield there's a link in the corner and in the description below you'll be glad you did because what we've never seen before in the data well here we go the labor insanity this from from zero hedge there are now record 4.6 million more job openings than unemployed workers. And that is what policymakers are afraid of. They're afraid of triggering a wage price spiral where employers are forced to raise wages to attract more workers or to keep the workers they have. And those workers with higher wages go out and cons consume more goods and services, driving inflation even higher when then you start to get a feedback loop where higher wages lead to higher prices and higher prices lead to higher wages. And well, with inflation already spiraling out of control, policymakers really, really do not want this at all. But is there any actual evidence to support that this is happening or could happen? Well, let's take a look at the charts and find out. Here we can see job openings, the JOLT survey in blue, 
and average hourly earnings of all employees. Now, it went back to the inception, which was in 2000 data, uh, 2007 for the data. And what we see here is there really isn't much of a relationship between average hourly earnings and job earnings. You can see that job earnings did rise and that did put some upward pressure on wages. But the question is, is that going to trigger inflation? Because there were plenty of openings here and you didn't see a big spike in, in average hourly earnings. Well, let's take a look because this is what the Fed thinks Thinks could happen. This is the fear they have is that consumer price index will rise as average hourly earnings go up. And what you can see is there really isn't much of a relationship here at all. In fact, there doesn't appear to be one that you could even count on happening. But nevertheless, this is what policymakers are afraid will happen is that we will have now persistent inflation. And so what do they need to do to fix that? Well, they need to curtail demand because the issue is there's a huge supply of jobs and there will be a huge supply of workers coming off the, the uh, background once Omicron ends. But is that enough? No, it isn't because there's still a shortage of workers. And so what will that do to wages? Well, it'll drive them up and then inflation will get out of control even more. So how do you fix this if you're a policymaker and if you're the Fed? Well, again, you curtail demand by raising interest rates and unwinding your balance sheet, or as we're doing now, tapering your balance sheet back down, purchases back down to zero. And here you can see, heading over to Bloomberg, that the market bulls are betting on a sharp and shallow Fed rate hike cycle as the Fed tightening expected to top out below 1.75% at the end of 2023. And charting Fed policy as risk assets swinging between extremes. If they were to raise rates six times over the next 24 months, we'd get to 1.75 or 2% that range. That's very normal Fed funds rates, said Hogan, the firm's chief market strategist. It's the path to get there that causes the most concern until it starts. And then you see that the sky doesn't fall because they're raising 25 basis points a quarter for the next eight quarters, or whatever their cadence happens to be. And that's the issue here is when you start restricting demand, the way you do that is by raising interest rates. And when interest rates go up, people tend to borrow less. In fact, when they see higher rates available at savings and other avenues, what do they do? They tend to save more. And there's your demand component. That's, but the problem is that we're already seeing is demand is already waning without government transfers. And now the Fed's jumping on board because they think that your wage isn't or is going up too fast. And most workers right now that are watching this are saying, my wage isn't going up enough. I can't afford these higher prices, but the Fed doesn't get it. They're afraid. And of course, we know what happens when there's high inflation and a Fed tightening cycle. Well, I'll show you because here I've circled the federal funds rate and consumer price index. And when they're both peaking, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and maybe 10 recessions that you will see happen. And so the risk here is indeed that we will see a recession. And even the Fed's own data suggests that wages are getting out of control in their book. As we head over to the Atlanta Fed, who shows that the Three month moving average of median wage growth on the hourly data is sitting around four and a half percent. Last time we saw it that high, well, there was a great financial crisis. Of course, what came with that was also a Fed tightening cycle. But well, how will this all end? Will it come out the way the central bankers want and the policymakers want with a soft landing and inflation cooling off? Or will it end in a recession? Because the way this always ends, and I want to show you this next chart, because what happens is there's a shortage of workers. But when the Fed curtails demand and the economy lapses back into a recession, well, people will need to look for jobs. And the reason people are quitting, well, there's really one answer. And it always is the same answer, is the stock market. And when people feel they're getting wealthier, as the Wilshire 5000 price index shown, people seem to quit their job more because why would they need to worry about working when they can live off of their portfolio? And when stocks start to go down, quits start to fall as people head back to work. And you can see that here and you can see it happen again. So the way this ends is the same way it always ends. As you see a pullback in demand, consumption falls, all of a sudden employers don't need as many workers, and the stock market goes down, and then all of a sudden there's a recession due to a Fed tightening cycle, and then people get come back into the workforce, and there's not enough jobs now for all the workers who want to work, driving wages back down and inflation along with it. I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. 
Bye now. The content of this video is provided as educational information only. It's not intended to provide investor or other advice. It's chosen not to be construed as a recommendation or solicitation by our social security, financial instrument, or participate in any particular trading strategy. This video was paired by Steve Van Meter. Personal capacity, opinions expressed in this video that do not affect the Atlas Financial Advice Inc. or Steve Van Meter Financial.